Hi, I am Nicky Clemens, and uh, as I've mentioned, I'm currently working through uh, getting all of my old clips, you know, ready to be posted and presented. And for the most part, that pretty much just involves upscaling them. Most of them are 720 by 480 or smaller, so I'm trying to bring them up to at least 1080p. The first thing I'm doing is just bringing them into Premiere, and uh, I'll set the field options to deinterlace, and that'll take care of some interlacing that most of the clips have. Um, and then to bring it up to 1080p, instead of just scaling it, uh, with the scale properties, I'm actually using uh, Red Giant's uh, 4K plugin effect. And I have several of the effects that I'm using saved on an adjustment layer. So I can just do copy and paste attributes. And so I'm adding frames, instant 4K, and denoiser. Um, and so that brings it up to 4K. And then I'm just leaving it at a, at a full widescreen, and so most of them are going to have black bars on the side because they're originally a four by three aspect ratio. And so instead of kind of cropping it and just keeping the black in there, it just makes everything nice and uniform. So everything's going to be the actual same size file. And that just keeps things a bit cleaner on my end. And so what Frames is doing is that is another step of deinterlacing. So that just takes care of any other interlacing issues that might be going on. And I just have that set to deinterlace only. And then the big workhorse is the instant 4K. Um, and then you can adjust that to you know, fit to the height of the clip or the width of the clip. And that would be cropping the top and bottom off. So I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do any cropping. I wanted to keep pretty much as all of the original information there. So I'm not I'm not scaling it all the way up so that, that it's all, you know, basically, yeah, there's black bars. So it's in the original format, but it's just formatted inside that 1080p window. And then I'm just throwing on a copy of Denoiser, which just cleans it up a little bit. I mean, you can't even tell there, but, uh, and it's just set on the stock settings. Now a few of the clips I am spending just a bit more time on, just improving them in areas where they can be improved. Like Mind, which I released a while ago, I actually wanted to remaster the credits for that. Um, but I ran into a problem. When I opened the file, it told me that the effect Earthquake 2 was missing. Um, and I actually, I remember this plugin. I think it was just a free plugin that I found. Um, I don't think it was anything stock with After Effects because usually Adobe keeps all of their stock plugins and they just say um, obsolete on them. But I think it was just a free little plugin. I used it in a bunch of things like this. And this. Then of course in mind. And I looked everywhere for a copy of it, and I couldn't find it in any of my hard drives or backups or software backups. Online, I found a reference maybe to it here. It might have been a part of this pack, Earthquake 2, but I couldn't find any links or anywhere to, to download this on any archive site or, or anything. I could not find any copy of the Earthquake 2 plugin for After Effects. I found a preset called Earthquake for a filter called Destabilize from DigiEffX. And that's definitely a, a Earthquake type plugin. It's shaking it all over the place. So I figured, well, maybe I'll just use that as a starting point and just try and dial in those settings to, to, to recreate the effect that the plugin did because even though the plugin can't be found, you can actually see the controllers for that plugin. And all it had was just horizontal and vertical vibration settings. So it was a very simple plugin. It wasn't doing much. But as I started trying to dial in this other destabilize plugin effect, I went back to the original clip and I realized it's not actually moving it. It's just, it's just kind of shaking it like it's the it's staying in the same spot so this destabilize plugin is doing the entirely wrong thing so that's not the right direction i want to be in 
at all. And again, just right here, you can just see how pixelated and hard to read this is with the choice of font, the low resolution, plus the blurry, shaky effect. You can see why I kind of wanted to redo those credits because I actually really like this credit sequence. It really feels like a real credit sequence. Just this song from my, my cousin's old band and it just, it, it hits in with the, the main credits and then as soon as And then when the song dips, right as the credit roll starts, it just felt so cool. It felt like something that really happens in real movies. So I really liked this credit sequence and, and remastering it should have been easy. I should have just been able to open the After Effects file and then export it at 1080p because it's all text, it's all vector. It shouldn't have been a problem. But of course, not having that effect meant that it just didn't work anymore. It didn't have that punch that I really liked on each of those names coming in. So just analyzing what it's doing to the text and knowing it was just a simple little plugin, I think all it's really doing is just applying a directional blur. So if I just do directional blur, crank up the blur length a bit, and then And that kind of looks like exactly what's going on. So I should be able to just go into the expressions for directional blur, do wiggle, maybe 10, 100. So it's just automatically now doing that. And so all I need to do is keyframe the blur length. So we'll start that and bring it down I'd say that's pretty much the effect recreated So there are the remastered HD credits from Mind. Looks pretty similar to me. And now it's in a nice high definition quality. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it was a really simple plugin and obviously it made doing this pretty easy, but of course all I really needed was a stock effect that After Effects already had and just throw a wiggle expression on it. and. That looks great, it looks good to me. So my sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nick D. Clements, if you're wondering. Nick is short for Nicholas, and the D stands for directional blur. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. This is how I clean. I make an even bigger mess somewhere where it literally can't be ignored.